Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our worship this evening. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for this evening is hymn 394, 394. cover of our worship bulletin as we join together in the confession of our sins according to the first table of the law, commandments one through three of the Ten Commandments. God commands us, thus says the Lord, you shall have all other gods. And as Martin Luther added in his explanation to the commandment, what does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Thus says the Lord. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Thus says the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. As Martin Luther also wrote in the Catechism, what does this mean? We should fear and love God, that we do not despise preaching and his word, but regard it as holy and gladly hear and learn it. As we enter into another Lenten season, which is to be a time of self-examination and repentance over sins, have we shown perfect love toward God? Have we been trusting in Him above all things? Have we used His name in vain? Have we listened to His holy law and kept ourselves from sinning? As the Apostle Peter said, Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And as our Lord said in the book of Revelation, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Let us join in confessing our sins to God in song.
all you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest for your souls. Upon this, your confession, I declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the hymn verse.
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Remember your mercy, O season our gospel lesson for today is the traditional gospel lesson on the first week first Sunday of Lent and that is the temptation of Jesus although it happened immediately after his baptism and it reminds us that Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil and that he came to uh, do what we could not remain sinless and on our behalf as our Savior we read in Luke chapter 4 beginning at the first verse Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned to the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Here ends our gospel lesson. We now turn to our sermon hymn for this evening, hymn number 873, hymn 873. <laughs>
peace be to you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ who came for us all. Amen. The text for our meditation this evening is our epistle lesson, the letter to the Romans, the 10th chapter beginning at the 8th verse. Paul writes, The word is near, close to you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, all who trust in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. These are the words of our Lord. Christian friends. In our text for this evening, we're jumping into, of course, the middle of a letter. And the Apostle Paul has had a lot of discourses with the church in Rome as we get to this 10th verse, a 10th chapter in Romans. It's covered a, quite a number of topics. But most of the topics all relate to how we are saved. How is anybody saved? And he addresses that very clearly in our text for this evening as he summarizes this middle of the 10th chapter. Now, when you look at it, there is the fact that sometimes there are those who are not saved. For instance, it was a high-ranking angel who fell from his position and rebelled against God, and now in our gospel lesson was trying to tempt Jesus, the Son of God and the Lord of us all, trying to tempt him to fall into sin. That's quite a difference from one's position as a high angel to now being called a devil, and rightly so, as we heard last night also uh, in our uh, Lenten lessons. And now, also with two, God's, Israel, uh, God's chosen people of Israel. Paul, through this letter, reminds them that not all Israel was saved. Many of them, even though they were part of God's chosen people, they fell away. And they rejected what was given to them. Did you catch in our Old Testament lesson how God was trying to remind the Israelites, even in the giving of their offerings, how gracious and compassionate and loving he had been to them? How he had brought them out of Egypt. How he had brought them to a land flowing with milk and honey. How he had done all these things on their behalf and on behalf of the whole world because of the person who would be born through the Israelites and in Bethlehem. And so he tried to remind them to remain humble in their attitudes toward God, his word, and what he had done for them. And notice there are others like that who, uh, as the text says tonight, will be put to shame. Who will be uh, ashamed of what they did while they were here if part of that was rejecting God's grace and his mercy and ultimately their Savior Jesus who came and died and rose again for them too. So the Apostle kind of uh, addresses this uh, topic in our short verses for tonight. Just how accessible, just how easy is it for a person to be saved? Now, sometimes people, sinners, fellow sinners, come to this idea and realization of their own accord or by a possible misuse of the scriptures and think that they'll become closer to God by trying to do lots of things to make up for sins that they had done in the past or sins that others in their family had done. 
and this idea of work righteousness that lurks in the heart of every sinner. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we get caught doing something or we do something wrong, maybe even unintentional, and we often will try to make up for it. And the human heart will come up with all kinds of ways to try to make up for things when we have sinned against God. And the Apostle addresses this problem even in the nation of Israel, who uh, addressed salvation at times as if it were like works and not by faith. And he says, they stumbled over the stumbling stone, which is Christ himself. Because they approach salvation as if it was something that we do to try to get ourselves closer to God. And the apostle completely rejects all this. Notice how he says at the beginning of the text, he says, what does it say in scripture? And constantly, Paul is always quoting from the Old Testament, especially in this book, of the letter to the Romans. And so he begins, but what does the Bible say? Near, near, close to you is the word. How close is it? And he describes it. He says, it's in your heart and it's in your mouth. That's how close it is. I suppose for us today too, you know, German Lutherans, Wells, Wisconsin Synod, uh, many of us were privileged to, for instance, go to parochial grade school. And think of how much of God's word, both maybe in Christian day school and then catechism class, we had to memorize. We had to memorize all those Bible passages. And maybe even hymn verses. Lots of hymn verses. And then we had to uh, memorize, you know, the catechism parts, Ten Commandments, uh, Lord's Prayer, Confession, things like that. And what does that do? Well, it's exactly as God had told the Old Testament people. I want you to put that word in your hearts and minds and carry it around with you wherever you go. And as Moses is about to give him the word, he says, hey, this is accessible. It's accessible. You don't have to go up to heaven to get it. You don't have to go down to the depths to find it. it it's right here. God's brought the word right to you. So that's the first answer to how accessible and how easy is salvation because God has brought the word to us. It is very accessible. And for us, notice he says it's in your heart and it's in your mouth. Perfect place for it to be. Now, as he writes to uh, this church in Rome, obviously there were Jews there who were present in the church. And he had to remind him, hey, there's no distinction between Jew and Gentile. Just because you're a Jew, you don't have any distinct advantage. And that could be also reminding to us who maybe have been Christians as long as we can remember, because mom and dad and grandma and grandma brought us up in this faith. And yet for how many children who have gone through catechism class and Sunday school and possibly Christian day school, how many have fallen away from their Lord and Savior and maybe are not in church anymore? So how accessible is this? And he reminds us that we too should not take it for granted. If you were here last night for Ash Wednesday and as the Lenten season continues, will you hear anything new in the Lenten lessons? Did you hear anything new in the lessons for tonight about the temptation of Jesus and even Paul's letter here? We're not going to hear anything new. We might hear things that we forgot, but it should not be anything new to us. And, and yet it's very easy for us because, hey, I know that Bible story. I've heard that about Peter's denial a hundred times. We could probably even say a thousand. And yet we have to be very careful that this word that is so near us, that we don't take it for granted. And we realize that this is for us, for our salvation. In fact, Paul says, this is the word of faith that we are proclaiming, preaching to you. This is exactly what I'm talking about as I write this letter to you, O church in Rome. It's the exact same thing I am preaching. And then he reminds them how accessible and how easy it is it for a person, any person, to be saved 
to attain salvation in heaven. And he says, well, if. So here's the if. And it just talks about the act of faith. If you confess in your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe, trust in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now it's interesting. You will be saved is a passive. It's not an active verb. Again, the Holy Spirit is reminding us, it's not something we do ourselves. It's something that God freely gives us. Just like in the Old Testament lesson, the Lord through the Holy Spirit reminded his Old Testament people, look at all these gifts I gave you. And it wasn't from yourselves. And isn't that what the Apostle Paul also reflected in the letter to the Ephesians? It's by grace, undeserved love, we have been saved. Passive again. We've been saved by somebody else. And it's not from ourselves. It's a gift from God, not by works. So Paul is continuing to preach the same faith that you and I have been blessed with and have heard and whose words... It's interesting. In the Greek, the word is singular. The Word of God. And yet, the Word of God covers how many books, how many chapters, and how many uh, years over its inspiration. And yet, that Word is all one and the same. And it all applies to us all. And notice, Paul describes that. He says, This same Lord, richly, richly, abundantly, graciously, generously, shows this to us all, and to especially all who call upon the name of the Lord. How easy, how accessible is the gift of salvation? It's very easy. It's very accessible. The Word is right here. The Holy Spirit is continuing to work upon our hearts and our minds. And so for anybody, for everybody, for all who call upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. Again, passive. They will be brought to heaven because of the gift of faith that God has given them. And what a wonderful thing to be reminded that it isn't up to us. I, I would hate uh, for us to turn Lent into a trying to be a better Christian so that we would be a little more certain that we might be going to heaven. And yet, in, in some circles, in the Christian church at large, at large, what you do is considered what's going to determine whether you get there or not. Now, you and I, having had this wonderful blessing of God's gracious gift of salvation, for instance, you will be saved. Dale didn't worry about dying, right? And we don't either. We may worry about how we're going to die, but we don't have to worry about dying, do we? Because of the faith, this word of promise that God has given to us in Christ, who died for us. He died for us so that we can live with him. And this is what we confess. So if all of us would go tonight, which would be a weird coincidence, but it could happen. If all of us would go tonight, by faith, by this word of promise, we know where we're going to be. And this is what God has asked us to confess. To share. Not everybody looks at the Bible the same proper way. There were Israelites who looked at it as a way and a means to get their way to heaven. Think of the uh, parable that Jesus taught about the tax collector and the Pharisee who went up to the temple to pray. That is this text in a nutshell. The, ta the Pharisee, I thank you that I'm doing this and this and this, and especially I'm not like this horrible human being, the tax collector. He thought he was gaining his salvation by what he did. So there are people out there that I'm sure you and I are going to bump into at times where you and I have an opportunity to confess, to remind them, it ain't us. It's only through Jesus who died for us and rose again. And so how easy is it? 
It's very easy. It's very accessible. Confess and believe. And even that we can't do ourselves. It's God working in us. So as you and I have this wonderful word continuing to be near us, God is near us. Jesus is near us. As we continue in this Lenten season, may we do so with confidence. Confidence in our own salvation that God has promised in his word. Confident not in our righteousness, but in Christ's. And may we continue to confess this however and whenever we're able, to all that we're able, as we continue until the day when confession is no longer needed and our trust and our faith is proven right because God said it and he fulfilled it when we stand in heaven. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing this Christian faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed found on the bottom of page 5 in our worship bulletins. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, you richly show grace and mercy to all, and have demonstrated this by bringing us and the whole world righteousness through Christ, his righteousness credited to us through faith. As you have brought us your word and planted it in our hearts and mouths, we thank you that through this word of faith we are saved. May our zeal to help bring that same word and message of free salvation through Jesus to many others. May we re reflect it in our lives and continue to confess that faith in our mouths so that many more are able to hear from us the truth of your saving word, which is near us all. Continue to bless all the work of our synod, its missionaries, its outreach, and all the things that we are doing to continue to shine Christ's light into the world and to call many to faith to your powerful word in the Holy Spirit. In all these ways, continue to bless our time together in this Lenten season as we follow Christ on his path to Calvary's cross and watch him earn and win salvation for us. We ask this all in his holy name, he who has also then taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
continue with our closing hymn found on the back cover of our worship bulletin.